I think my drive as a performer is always that I want to get to the roots of what the composer ultimately wanted. One of the great things about working at the Royal Academy of Music is that I've got amazing colleagues who not only are performers at the very, very highest level, but they'll always question what they've got on the page in front of them and say, are we serving this music to the best of our abilities with the text that we've got? And this was a classic case when Jo came to see me about five years ago and said that she had really grave doubts about the text of the cello concerto that we've all come to know and love. So it was really important that Jo was able to go off to Krakow, look at Schumann's original composing manuscript from 1850, and see how much this score had been pulled about by many generations of musicians and to restore it to this sort of pristine condition which may not have been Schumann's last thoughts but they were certainly Schumann's first thoughts and therefore they deserve to be much more widely known than they are. back I was preparing for a concert tour performing the Schumann Cello Concerto and there I was cross-checking from an old edition that I had and a couple of scores and I suddenly became very suspicious that nothing added up. When I discovered that probably 90% of the manuscript was in the Jagiellonska Library in Krakow, I was able to make contact with them and they sent me a couple of leaves of the manuscript and I realised at that moment that all of the editions that I had in front of me didn't bear any relation to what I could see on the page. When I did first open the manuscript and saw Schumann's hand, what struck me was how could this change so much? You look at the page and it is so organised, so clear, and the writing was meticulous. He wrote this piece in two weeks and he actually wrote it as a Konzertstück, not a cello concerto. It was one of my major findings. Well, we know that the music that Schumann was writing in the late 1840s and through to 1850 were not really affected in a big way by a lot of psychological or mental instability. But clearly he had some doubts about the score and we know that he asked various cellists, most of all Robert Bockmuller, who was the leading cellist in Dusseldorf where he worked, about the cello writing. And I'm afraid to say, to cut a long story short, that Bockmuller messed around, not just with Schumann, I think, but the text itself. So that when Schumann finally gets the piece into print, three years later, where he's in a much more delicate state of mind, it's not the score that he'd written in 1850. Within the first 20 four bars before first big tutti, there are probably 20 or 30 differences, which was absolutely staggering. So as well as the articulation being different and therefore some quite basic expressive parameters in this piece, there are some passages that look completely different, aren't they? I mean, the notes are different, the pitches, the rhythms. But there's a big question on how much of this was Schumann compromising in order to pander to cellists and one cellist in particular. I think Schumann was hoping that Bockmull would be his ticket to somebody actually performing the piece and it didn't happen and in fact the piece wasn't performed until 1860 which was four years after Schumann died. So this is the second movement mm -hmm. um, and you'll see that again much longer lines mm -hmm. and very specific this time in, in Bar eight of the slow movement that he wants that separated was so clear mm -hmm. as opposed to the same place before. Mm. It's when you see the cleaner text that was Schumann's original text, yes. that again that, that comes off the page much more vividly. It seems to me there's yes. much more interesting poetic content in his first thoughts than there are in the revision that we're, we're all familiar with. So it was like an old master painting. Layers have been added over the years, and what you were doing was going back to that yeah. sourcing crack of and seeing what the master had done himself when he first laid it down on the canvas. The 
the final section. These notes are actually descending and then the big run right up to the top. I think it's so thing. exciting that you're restoring that initial conception of the very end of the concert stuch, which I think is a much more memorable ending, much harder to bring off, I would imagine. If Schumann were around, I'd ask him if I could do both. <laughs> the ending to me is that in the text that we're used to looking at it's beautifully written it's very exciting but it it sounds to me that it's it's quite conventional mid 19th century way of doing things at the end of a concerto but in the Krakow score uh, his first thoughts it seems to me stretch way beyond the middle of the 19th century to the end of the century to Debussy even onwards into the 20th and so what we've got in the cello concerto I think is the summation of a lot of Schumann's musical thinking from the previous decade. And what's wonderful is that Joe is going to do this not just with the edition, but through performances as well. For future generations of performers, it would be wonderful to produce an edition which they know is transparent and validated on the Krakow manuscript. What's particularly pleasing is I think it was a cellist who messed up the entire process at the beginning, and now it's a cellist who's putting it right 150 years later. It feels a bit like a sort of life project, but I hope it isn't. <laughs> I, <laughs>